signal across and the man behind the camera. We, uh, we can change it up throughout this game. Obviously, if uh, Samuel wants to turn around and have a go of the call, as uh, Mr. Tate, you will just mention, he has a shot at goal. It's in, is it? It is. Brilliant shot there, and that puts Lindisfarne already. And um, we're looking at the score now, and so far the favourites for this match, the Celts, who tragically lost by a point last year, has uh, have yet to score. So, uh, Vossi, the score at the moment, uh, four to nothing. Yep. Do you want me to call? You can call, my friend. Have a go. Here's the microphone. It's up to you. Here's David Clark at, on the wing. He's chip, he soccer's a kick to Matt Collis, so he's dangerous from there. He has a shot and he does miss. And the scores remain 4-0. We should point out to our listeners that old Lindisfarne do have a rather strong breeze, and it has strengthened throughout the day. Uh, it's just lessened as we speak, but uh, they do have the wind advantage in the first half, and I should point out too that the Hovac Elks did, did win the toss and did elect to kick into the breeze, so they are hoping that it will strengthen later on. Now, Goldsmith kicks out of out after that wide. Straight to Sean Cornius, had a ripper of a season. He is from he is an Irishman through and through. Handball to Lindiger, who got it to Matt Coles, who had a shot and missed again. So the Hobart Celts have had a fair bit of ball in the last few minutes, just struggling to make uh, take full advantage, and it's still all in the stun. 1-1, that's four. Hobart Celts yet to score. Yes, that's right, Vossi. A steady start for both teams, really, but gee, a couple of key misses there for the Celts, and they'll, they'll be really, really keen to get something on the board very soon, because... Uh, if uh, Old Lindisfarne were to get an under here, that would extend the lead to seven points halfway through the first half, and uh, that could give them a huge advantage going into the final half of this match as Matt Collis gets the ball, and again, just wide there. Matt Collis, key forward today for the Hobart Hilt. He's already had a couple of shots, uh, two from the right, and that one from just left of centre has put them all wide. He'll be looking to make amends, certainly in the second half when the Celts do have the breeze, but... Uh, He'll be looking to improve his game uh, before that. Now, long ball from Goldsmith. He is using the breeze to his full advantage, but this time intercepted by Stuart Clark, who takes off through midfield. Now has a bit of a fumble. Ball on the ground. Uh, he's going to call play on now. Stuart Clark kicks it out, out towards the right sideline. Finds David Clark. I think not sure he meant that, but now he kicked into Matt Collins, who has a shot. Excellent kick, and that's some good play in the end. Uh, Stuart Clark had a fit of the fumbles there in midfield, but they recovered through his brother David and Matt Collis put the first point on the board for the Celts. It is the Celts 1, Lindisfarne 1-1, one, one, that's 4, uh, 7 minutes gone, first half. Yeah, it's a very good shot there by big Matty Collis as Tatey gets the oh, ball. And it was a great save by goalkeeper Stefan. And uh, Stefan Kalik, and I believe that's his name. <laughs> and we should mention here that none other than <coughs> Lazarus himself, big oh. Stewie Clark, has made the match mm. after we were told during the week that he was absolutely no chance to play. He's playing with a cut hand. I believe he actually lost a couple of fingers in the incident as well. So he's playing with a, a stump here today, and uh, he's, he's going all right. He's, he's, he's looked pretty comfortable with the ball so far, Mr. Boss. Goldsmith just had a shot for goal. It, it was a 45. After the ball goes out of bounds, off out across the goal line from the defending team. It is like a corner in soccer, but it is taken from the 45 metre line. Now Goldsmith had the shot for Olindistan and put it wide. So now the Celts have it back. They're in midfield. Ball comes out wide to Sean Coyne at left half forward. He's he's moving well. Hand pass now to David Clark. He's going to hand pass to Matt Coles. So has a shot for goal. Puts it across the face. Unlucky there. Good build-up by the Celts. They had the numbers. They just couldn't finish. It remains four points to one. Old Lindisfarne lead. Early, er, early going in this grand final. Will they rue those missed chances later on, Voss? We'll find out as Tate handballs over the top to Big Steve, who handballs back to Tate. Good pressure from Mikey Lineker as he get, costs the ball up to Big Kendall, Becky. Who puts it over? No, he's missed. He's no, he's missed. He's missed. missed. I beg your pardon, he's missed. So the big Kendall didn't come with a big goal there. And the score is 1-4 in the old Lindisfarne favour. Samuel McCross, and just a word of note, his umpire bugger off floating around today. I'd like to get his view on the game today. The referee? Yes, we will find out soon. As Errol running down the wing, chased by Becky. A battle of the giants there. And yes, Becky's given away a free kick there. So, Big Errol, he's within scoring range here. He's usually a pretty accurate shot at goal, is Errol. And a chance here for the Celts to snag 
Yes, welcome back here to the Royal Hobart Showgrounds of the Gaelic Football Grand Final between the Celts and the old Lindisfarne Blues. And uh, apologies for some technical difficulties there. That was that is what happens when you don't change the batteries correctly on a microphone. And uh, since we've been gone, nothing really has happened. We've had a bit of swearing, a bit of action, a few deaths, but other than that, not a lot, no scores. And uh, the Celts at the moment are struggling at the at the time to get on the board. They've got a couple of points, and they really need to find something here. They have another shot. And it is not anything there, but uh, I'm going to hand this microphone back to uh, Sammy McCross. And Sammy, a good game so far for both teams, especially the old Lindisfarne Blues. Yes, it has been a good game so far, Ben, but the, the Celts, they may rue some missed chances. I think they've missed four gettable shots so far. And the old Lindisfarne boys, well, they're in front on the scoreboard, but they look as though they're just hanging on here. The Celts playing very, very well. As number no, nine for the Celts there, and that's a tackle. That's a tackle, <laughs> so big Steve Simons has given away a, a free kick there, and it's the Celts with the ball now. And the game in a very tense moment here as Becky, giant Kendall, grabs the ball, and yes, I agree, there is trouble here. Michael Clark gathers the ball, and he's missed too. So the pressure of a grand final getting to some of these players, Vossi. Now, we watched Michael Clark at training on Tuesday, and he had the radar on big time. He could not miss, but he's missed there. And Old Lindisfarne, with the breeze, are not playing the game that on their terms, that's for sure. Kelts having a lot of chances into the breeze, and they are playing well. It is... The breeze is fluky, but it is, at the moment, quite strong as the Celts attack. They have had more had more shots at goal, and uh, this will be pleasing to their coach, Mike Lineker, as the ball is in a scuffle. Right, uh, left, uh, right, half forward for the Celts, and the Celts do have a free kick here. It, uh, it's going to be taken by David Clark, so he's about 13 metres from the goal line, but right out, out against the boundary line. Ball comes in, I think he might have had a shot there, and that was ambitious, because the ball has gone wide, and the score remains four points to one. Low-scoring game, Celts doing a lot of the attacking, but into a rather uh, not insignificant breeze, put it that way. That's right, and that's... Michael Clark with the ball now for Old Lindisfarne. He gives it away to Steve Simons. Back to Michael Clark, who's put it over the bar. And the Old Lindisfarne boys move to five. five. One, two, five to the Hobart Celts, one behind. Just having a bit of a look over there and observing the uh, camera of a, looks like a Mercury photographer rocking up here to take a few oh, shots. Uh, only a day late, but look, better late than never. And uh, look, I've actually heard word from both benches. The fresh legs are going to play a key in this match. Of course, the uh, the old Lindisfarne Blues playing an extra match today. Has a bit of rough and tumble going out there in the middle and a free kick to the Celts. But I think that uh, despite the scoreline, the Celts will be confident into the second half. And a bit more of a shove going on there. This is getting violent, fellas. I'm liking this. Yes, a uh, tough call there on Matt Collis. Uh, Unfortunately, he's got his feet tangled up with uh, big Ken Dog Becky, and uh, unfortunately he gave away the free kick. It's big Michael Clark gets the ball, and he's put it over again. Yep. So the old Lindisfarne boys, they've got away to a handy lead here. It's five points the margin, and they may just be putting themselves in a position to attack the second half with a lot of confidence here. As a great kick out by a big Stefan there. Goes to Matt Collis, who gets the ball over to Errol, and he loses it. And, oh dear, it's a bit of a scuffle down there. And it's and it's been had a shot at goal there, off the ground by Errol, and it is wide. This is incredible. There's a mixture of every single code of football, nearly as AFL out there. There's rugby, there's soccer. Everyone just should come out and watch a sport like this, because it's great fun. That's right. It's Big Tatey with the ball now. Hands over the top to a teammate. Who gives it off to into the path of Michael Clark, who gathers the ball, trying to pick it up here. Good work there by the number 10 for the Celts. T Tony Wang, one of the well, first year player, had a marvellous season. Just gave away a free kick there, but he won't be too d disappointed with that because uh, it has slowed the game down a little bit. He's coming off to, ha to have a spell. Uh, but uh, some good, not bad play there, competing with one of the uh, giants of, of uh, Ga Gaelic footy. And a shot at goal there, at, in its half time, that shot just going wide there, the shot by Michael Clark. And at half time, in the grand final, it is Hobart Celts 1, Old Lindisfarne 6. Yes, it's half time here at the 2011-2012 Gaelic Football Grand Final between the Celts 
the old Lindisfarne Blues and the Blues out of the box early. Great start for them, leading at half-time. Samuel Cross and brilliant commentary by you so far. First of all, may I just add, but uh, what are your thoughts of the game so far? Thank you very much, Ben. Yes, so the old Lindisfarne boys, they're making the most of their chances so far. They've put six points on the board. Hobart Celts won, and they'll be, they'll be ruining uh, about four uh, missed chances. And, uh, yep, the old Lindisfarne boys, they are looking good for a victory here. What do you reckon, Ben? Oh, I have to agree with you. It's just surprising. Uh, obviously, the Celts' big favourites finishing on top of the ladder, wanting to avenge last year's defeat by one point in the grand final. But uh, the, the Blues having the extra game today, they're no doubt a little bit more tired compared to the Celts. Celts having a lot more of a rest. But a lot of misses by the Celts, as you mentioned. They had a lot of opportunities there. But the Blues have come out all firing. They, they could be coming a bit tired towards the latter half of this uh, second half. And the Celts have that, that freshness about them. This is the first game, the only game they played today. We saw in your game, of course, you were 10 points down at the half but you came back within two so I'm not discounting the Kelch yet I think that they can potentially go forward and uh, put a real fight in towards the Blues. Yes I think you make a good point there Ben about the fresh legs of the Kelts. of course they only had to play one game today, they've got I believe four players on the bench so yeah they could come home with some good legs Old Lindisfarne of course played a match already today, uh, about two hours ago now and yet I reckon that in the second half of this match, the old bodies will just uh, start tightening up a little bit. And uh, I would just like to add, I mentioned briefly before, the commentary by yourself has been superb. And uh, Vossi, our good friend, special comments, is just off the side of the camera here. And he can feel free to step in front of the camera if he wants to, because he has been absolutely brilliant. Take, take a step in here, Vossi, and fit into the camera, because you've been doing absolutely brilliantly. How are you, how are you feeling at the moment, the pressure, the commentary? You're doing well. It's actually a good game. If I were involved in the play right now, I actually want to be the Celts because they had a lot of the ball in the first half. Now, at this ground there's always a breeze. As Sam would know, he's played all season, there's always a breeze and it, sometimes it favours that end, sometimes it favours that end. Uh, this season, it's, and it varies from week to week. Today it is definitely favouring, I think, the grandstand end, that end, the end which Olinus found kicked to in the first half. They didn't take full advantage of the breeze. The Celts, on the other hand, had a lot of the ball, had a lot of the chances, they just couldn't nail them. If they can get as much of the players in the, in the second half as, as they had in the first and convert some of, the, some of their opportunities, I think they'll win the game. They're, they're, they're five points behind. A couple of goals gives them the, the, the lead, but they'll have to play well because they do have the monkey on their back from last season of the one-point loss in the grand final. And it's obviously a lot of pressure on them. They want to win this title. The Blues want to go back-to-back, -back, but as the players are getting out in the field now, we're uh, going to return to play for this, the second half. Good well, luck with the calls. Board, we're going to do well. Uh, I'm going to go for the Celts in a close one. Mm -hmm. I think the Celts probably by two or three. Uh, I said it before the match. I think the old Linus Farm boys will get up, and I'm sticking with them. I think they'll get up from here. Let's see how it goes here in the Brink and Edge Radio.